You know, it's interesting, in this disrupted landscape, like so many other things where there's too much freedom or too many possibilities, it can be overwhelming to people. Um, presumably, some at least small percentage of the people in this room are interested in producing television. And, um, you know, I, I, I imagine you're wondering how you get to do that in this disrupted landscape. You know, for 30 years, television was utterly dominated by writer producers. Um, that's still true, but less true now. I and mean, you have more quote unquote non writing producers now. But, you know, I don't know if there's a good answer to this, but I have to ask anyway, because I know a lot of people in this audience are asking the question how does somebody get to do this now? In other words, you know, and each of you are going to have a different perspective on this because you all range in a lot of different ways around the business. But what would you say to someone who is, you know, coming up in this business, has a great idea, has done something before, you know, how do they find their way in this incredibly complicated landscape right now? You must get, you, people must ask you this. Well, when I, when I have people come to me and say, I've got this outlandish idea or this big idea, it's, it's great, I, I just tell them, write it. Because uh, I think today, you know, there's so much competition and people have so many wild, you know, interesting ideas. Uh, and in a weird way, it's, it's actually gotten harder to get people to um, commit to buying those things at times. Yes. And the spec market has been so strong that if you really capture lightning in a bottle, like Extan is a perfect example of that. You mm -hmm. know, um, these guys wrote the script last summer. Nobody had really, you know, heard of them. They uh, submitted it to WME, some coordinators looked at it, and next thing you know, it was a full-on bidding war. Every single network they went to bid on it, and it landed at CBS with a 13-episode commitment with Halle Berry and Steven Spielberg uh, attached to it. So there are those, um, mm -hmm. there are those examples. Hmm. And there are a lot of them, actually, right now. Yeah. I, I, I would say from, the, from, the, from where I sit, uh, for a producer who's really trying to break through, it, you've really, I think the cleanest way is controlling some kind of intellectual property. Um, I think that what you're looking at if you're at an agency, you know, you're trying to, I think writers still matter a ton. Marshall, I, I, um, there are a lot of great producers out there um, that help the process immensely and are total, uh, and an absolute necessity to the process. But if you don't have a great writer who's going to, you know, once you get that 13 episode order, historically that's why TV writers have always been so important to the business is it's not just about one script like in the movie business, it's about who's gonna give me 13 scripts under the schedule which we need and they're gonna all be quality and they're gonna be written in a budget that's um, doable. And so that's why the writers in TV have had so much power. So as producers, what you have to think about is, you know, there are so many amazing high-end producers um, in television, I mean, J.J. Abrams, Kurtzman Orsi, um, Jerry Bruck, I mean, the list goes on and on. So you have to think about what am I bringing to the table that will prevent a high-end writer from going to one of those tried and true and come to me. It's almost the same philosophy of an independent studio. What more can we offer that's gonna get the talent to come play on our field? And intellectual property really is the greatest equalizer. You know, you have a great book, you have a great article, you have a great, you know, a great idea. It's really, it's really hard it's for a producer to come call me up or call anybody up and say, hey, we have, I have a great idea. Mm -hmm. Well, so much of great television is like, okay, who's the creative team that's going to execute it, right? So, but as a, as a producer, if I was sitting in the audience, that's something that I would be doing and focusing on if I wanted to really answer your question, Mark, Marshall, break through. I would be figuring out what kind of intellectual property I could control that makes the game come to me. And I would add to that just to say that, you know, don't look, look in all different places. I mean, there's producers I'm working with now that I was introduced to that own books that have been only published in Sweden, you know, and it is part of a Scandi crime drama that is so popular in the world right now. Um, the book happens to take place in Minnesota. So, I mean, it's written, it's not, you know, and I think that's really exciting to open up the world and see, well, where are the IPs? You don't just have to look at just the New York best times, best, best uh, 
Seller. bestsellers list. You can look at other places and just, you know, that's another place to think about. Why is it Sweden and Israel are where all the <laughs> stories are coming from these Korea. days? It's so interesting. True. <laughs> Anything to add? Well, I, I would really echo what, what, uh, what Peter said. I, I'm a, I have been a non-writing producer. I'm now becoming a writing producer, but, but Flash Forward and House of Lies were both books that were um, very inexpensive options for me, and I I was very patient. They were both they were both projects that that I had for many many years before I found the right writer and the right creative team to to make them with. And um, uh, but but you know it was it, it it's definitely a strong selling point and something that you're bringing to the great writing partner when you bring it in. And the only and the other thing it's very corny to say, but I really believe it's true is 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 if you have a passion for it. Um, I just sold an idea to Amazon actually, and it was something that for six years I could not let go of the idea. Everybody told me I was crazy, and um, I finally went out with it, and several networks wanted it. I wanted to take it to Amazon because they seem like the most exciting opportunity right now, place to do something, but, um, but you know, don't, not every idea you have, not every overnight kind of whim is going to be the one but if some if you really feel something if it's a story that you can't let go of follow that i think it's true